Um, so, last time on The Wild Sea, the, with, the campaign has no name, just thinking about it, we probably should name it at some point, but last time on The Wild Sea, uh, the crew of the, what was your first ship called? The Stars, stars Beneath? beneath. Yeah. Stars Below, <laughs> Stars Beneath. Yeah. Beneath. Um, it's sunken well, now. Very beneath now. Um, yeah, part of the crew of the Stars Beneath, while exploring a mansion that had been bought up from the under eaves uh, in the kind of aftermath of a massive root quake, um, part of the crew of the Stars Beneath, the players we have here, uh, were separated from their crewmates, which luckily for them allowed them to escape the mansion and their original ship being pulled into the depths as uh, gigantic spectral centipedes wrap themselves around it, destroying it and most of the mansion in the process. Luckily for them, Obida um, managed to get his... Well, I say get, it was a, there was a process to it. There was a lot of disaster involved. Um, his outrider, uh, a smaller ship called the Shrike, and rescue his uh, new kind of entire crew, seeing as you seem to be the only survivors. Um, that does not go, of course, for your new passenger, um, a an ardent uh, known as Agdis, who can't really be called a survivor, seeing as they've been dead for 40 years, but they are an anchor. So they are a, a ghost um, with a kind of anchoring uh, acid-burning tobacco pipe, uh, which their, their kind of soul is bound to. You now, as a crew, have a new ship. It is partially named, it is definitely called the Anchor, but there is also a word in between those two other words. Um, the what Anchor, none of you quite know, and Agdis can't remember, even though it was the ship he sailed on. 40 years is a long time to be trapped in part of a mansion. So yeah, with that, uh, let's have a quick round of character introductions, just to refresh people's memories, and then let's get going. Uh, I am Rick. I'll be playing as uh, Hasalkin, uh, a tall for, compared to us, short for Ectus, uh, dancing, navigating, horizoner, uh, wonderful, you know, cultural sailing pal out on this, bright and dancing. Uh, as he's, you know, at the helm at this moment, he looks out, who's he seeing at this second? Because uh, we are sailing now, we are moving. He is doing the dance of the levers and gears that control our ship. So as this bright, you know, flash is enjoying and loving every second that he see, who's he, who's he seeing who's out on the, the deck? If Texia is on the deck, um, wait, there's this really neat tree. Um, but like, it's weird because the tree's alive, but the ship is made of spectral dead tree, but the live tree seems to be growing into the, anyway, there's a neat tree. Um, and I feel like there could be some cool stuff going on with that tree's roots, especially if like spectral roots go somewhere. I don't know how that works, but Kiptexia is uh, kind of just one part, check it out, tree. Another part, herding spiders back into themselves because their spiders keep running away and that's maybe not good. Um, unclear what happens when the spiders leave the hive mind. Um, it's fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's fine. Yeah, mechanically speaking, uh, Kip's character uh, was uh, hit with quite a lot of Maya in the last session. So and it has a fully marked Maya track, meaning that her spiders, I believe also your spiders, escape your skin? Striving for individuality. So Wonderful. yeah, Kip, Kips is on the tree and I've totally forgotten to say what he is, but Kips is a hive mind of uh, sentient spiders. He is good at dredging, delving, looking under the waves, cool stuff. Um, he is not good at, at at trusting others to be safe while doing that with him. Or being a hero individual. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if your your rogue doomsayer spider is one of the ones like trying to get the spiders back together. It's like, we all need to come together. <laughs> or the end is nigh. And I, we must be together for it. So, maybe one of these spiders has crawled away, and as though the camera follows it, uh, who might this spider climb toward? Yeah, if it uh, heads towards the engine room, it'll just see Basil drumming away at a heart with an electric uh, arrow because he didn't realize he can stop now. <laughs> um, 
Basil is a very large oh. uh, man. He looks a bit like a manta ray, and he is um, a little bit dumb, but it's okay. He's figuring it out. He That's is bad. a rattle hand and is supposed to be fixing this engine, which he has successfully done. But again, he did not realize he can stop yet. So someone needs to tell him that soon. <clears throat> And, and yeah, I, I, I guess then we, we finally see a, a terribly banged up little moth guy, uh, kind of two big fluffy, you know, moth. I kind of figure out what the antennae, but one's very singed and one's kind of wilting down. He's pretty upset, pretty banged up on the hole. And uh, he's, there's a, a carriage that's fallen on, on the top of our ship um, as we're exiting. And uh, Obaid is currently trying to harvest the axle, ac- yeah, axle off of this carriage, that's kind of smashing something into it, um, and attempt to uh, salvage some of his gear that uh, was was pretty banged up uh, in, in our in our past uh, adventure. Um, and yeah, I'm silly, and I'll be playing him. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, then let us jump straight in. I am Felix and I will be the Firefly for this session. Uh, Firefly being the wild, he's kind of GM. And as the GM, I should probably tell you, the ship you're on, the anchor, um, it is travelling upwards through the tangle, uh, the kind of middle layer of the wild sea, this this vast expanse of treetop ocean, and up towards the thrash, the topmost layer of the trees. Um, as you make your way through the upper tangle and towards the thrash, uh, there is more light, more ambient light around you, fewer branches and leaves blocking your path to the sky. However, that light is coming from the moon. Uh, it is nighttime. It is a bright night, but it is still definitely night. Um, you are, as you're rising, uh, probably circling the sides of this new rift that's been created um, by the, the fall of your old ship, the stars beneath, and the mansion that it was exploring. Uh, It's kind of a bittersweet moment, I suppose. You do now have your own ship, you do now have your own freedom, but you have lost all of the people that you had been sailing with, including your old captain. What are you gonna do about that as as a quick opening question? Ignore it personally. (laughs) <laughs> Obida watched them all die <laughs> yeah, that's fair um, I know that uh, Hasalkin w- when, when we next get to port is going to re- uh, what, wherever that port is to the junction house and you know report in that you know he has witnessed this that this has happened partially because you know that's how information will be able to get around but partially also because it will give him a chance to tell story and pick up uh, what he can while there as well so that's what he plans to do about it. But right now, I, I think that he's just marveling and sailing. And So, uh, Kips is pretty split apart right now, literally and figuratively. Um, there's kind of a contingent of spiders that is... Um, still checking out the tree because that's, that's that's a cool special tree dude that's that's cool um but there's also you know spiders kind of going in and out in and out of other groups we've got like a stream of spiders that's running over to where abida is and going wait, wait, wait no no stop i want to look at it first don't don't break it and then we've got more spiders that are like running around the deck and yet more spiders that are crawling up the gunnels, the side of the ship, the railings. Um, and I think it's these spiders that are actually the least kind of hyperactive because these are the spiders that are looking where the ship used to be and realizing there's no ship because I, um, we and Basil, used, we were down when the ship fell. So we, we heard it. And we heard people screaming, but we didn't see any of it. And now we get up finally above the waves and there is nothing, right? It's just gone. Um, There is literally just a hole in the canopy leading downwards. Yeah. Yeah. Less than great. Take a public wave. Oh, side note, I think that um, 
some spiders are climbing down the ship. Like, get me out of here. I'm done. I'm done with the also ship. I'm sense. out. No. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm out. <laughs> you need them. And uh, speaking of Basil, in fact, is anyone going to tell Basil that they no longer have to keep poking the heart with an electric arrow? Seeing as your ship does run on a combination of steam piping and an ancient leviathan's heart. No. Sometimes the wind. And sometimes the wind, that's very true. <laughs> no one. Basil just continues. No, no takers. Okay, Basil, no you're, you're beating a heart. Basil is in the engine room, ignorant of the mass death that has occurred because he too has not seen the falling ship. And is just like, this is fine. He doesn't know yet. Well, I, I, I do think that one of one of the spiders, uh, or like a couple of spiders, probably are just kind of exploring the ship, aka trying to run away. Um, and I, I imagine there are some that that kind of start like, you know apparating out of the walls of the engine room and maybe like crawling around the steam pipes and stuff. Maybe some of them are kind of like trying to grab dew or condensation off the pipes and drink it up. Um, and there's definitely some curious ones that go on the heart and maybe go a little too close to the air. <laughs> so so I'm careful not to hit any of them. He's like, I can't hurt. This is my friend. I have to be so <laughs> careful. Awesome. Uh, I don't think they tell you to stop, but I, I think they do, you know, <laughs> give you pause enough that maybe, maybe eventually you'll realize you can't stop. Maybe. Maybe. Um, well, maybe. there is, uh, as you all kind of busy yourself with your separate tasks around the ship, driving, heart beating, um, there is one person who is doing nothing other than watching at the rail, and that is your new passenger. Uh, Agdis. Agdis, since you rescued him from the ruins of that mansion, um, you are now on his old ship. Like, this is the ship he used to crew when he was alive. And he is just kind of standing at the railing near the prow, looking out at the waves as you as you kind of move upwards and you break into that, that topmost area of the thrash. And it's the first time he's seen sunlight in 40 years. Unfortunately, it's night, so... Uh, moonlight, but it's the next best thing, and anyone on deck can hear him just kind of, oh, it's been a, it's been a long time. Moonlight is just sunlight light. That is, that's very true. <laughs> you can spell it either way. <laughs> the road doomsayer is, is, is near, it's uh, Agdis, right? Agdis, yeah. Um, there's a rogue doomsayer three are near Agdis, and you can like whoever's nearby because they're not very loud when it's just a spider or two could hear them going and just die. Enjoy it while you can. <laughs> the end. It's it's nigh. <laughs> The end may well be nigh, but Agnes has already faced one end and technically sort of survived. So, you know, he wouldn't be that bothered by that. Um, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, you have indeed uh, broken out of the, the tangle and are back in the thrash. You're back on top of the Wild Sea as much as one can be on top of the Wild Sea. Uh, you are moving through the, the kind of uh, thinnest, leafiest area of the sea. And from here, it's, it's really up to you what you do. Sailing at night is more dangerous than sailing during the day, but you have just overcome a massive danger in itself in the last session. So whether you wish to continue on and even where you go is, is very much something you should decide right now. Did we have a, um, a port that we were planning to go on in our last ship before? after we salvaged whatever we had. Uh, yeah, you were course. gonna return to a port of origin, definitely. <clears throat> we should, we should, probably, should probably head that way. I'm calling up the stairs because no one has told me I can stop. But I just want y'all to know, we should probably go somewhere soon. <laughs> Can't do this yeah. forever. <clears throat> yeah, I guess. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, ghost guy. Yes? I uh, forgot your name already. Could you tell me your name, please? 
It's Agdis. Agdis. Okay. Uh, a, can you touch things? Can you? Can you? Can I? Can I? Corporate? Can you corporate? Um, Agnes will take a, a long draw of his acid burning pipe and then blow smoke in your face. All right. Yeah. That's a. Uh, mm-hmm. You put your foot on that part of the carriage. Kind of help me leverage this pretty place. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Sorry. Um, and he does so. There, the moonlight does, it shines slightly through him. Like there is just that little kind of dappling effect where his shadow should be. But he is solid enough definitely to help you. Lovely. So uh, where were you trying to go before? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, there was a, I'm actually from a port that was was pretty close to here. A um, little place called Slim Pickings. I lived there with, uh, with my family, actually. Um, I was only a temporary hire and uh, I wonder what's, yeah. And he seems kind of lost in thought. He, he drops the axle that he was kind of holding for you. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. <laughs> Take another point of damage. No, don't. <laughs> uh, slim pickings. Well, it's probably changed in 40 years. I've definitely absolutely heard of that, but you should describe it to me just to make sure that I know that you know where and what Slim Pickings is, please. Uh, it was a, so there's, there's, there's trees. I'm guessing there's still trees. The, uh, the tall shanks, there's ones that stand even further, even higher than the rest of the, the kind of waves. Um, there's a broken tall shank, uh, maybe half a day's travel from, from here. If, if we're still in roughly the same place, hard to know with the, the mansion we were in going down and then up and then down and then up. But, half a day's travel away a broken tall shank and there's a big spike or something in it i think it was stone bone it's it's kind of hard to remember but i had a house on there there were a few of us kept cows well i'll talk to the rest of the crew and see if we're willing to head that way i don't think we have like a formal power structure at this point on the boat so i guess we'll like take a vote or something no that would that would actually be um be really good it's been a while like it's like you said but it would be nice to see if my family's still there you know well seeing as how we're kind of commandeering your boat i suppose it's the least we could do well i suppose that's fair but it's not like i owned it i just served on it the rest of the crew weren't so uh, lucky to survive, I suppose. And he kind of looks down at his very slightly translucent form and goes, if lucky's the right word. Mm. Well, anyway, this axle, sorry, just kind of picks it back up and continues helping you pull this wagon apart. Steady there, on. There, there are a good number of spiders on said axle. All of them are screaming a little bit. Felix, is there any hyphen on this carriage anywhere? Um, you know, actually, that is a that's a decent question. This is a pre-verdant carriage. There is a there's mm-hmm. a be hyphen on there. Um, if you want to roll for it, I will let you potentially find some. Okay. Uh, roll jello. I need dice. There we go. Okay. I think I just have one. Think think of this as kind of like uh, equal parts a role to interpret what you find and a role to find something that hasn't been destroyed by being down in the underage for 300 years. Yeah, that, that's fair. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Furiously smashed by an angry little moth man. <laughs> um, right. So either way, I've got one in study and I've got one in Hyven. Uh, so I'm just going to go with Hyven. Um, edge of sharps because I'm looking for, you know, fancy writing. Um Maybe Calico Slink because I Let's see dark. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't really think anything else. Um so that would just be 3D6 and we'll see what happens. Well, we've we've, we've, kind of one because we've got lights on the ship. Carriage is old. Oh, that's true, yeah. What lights do you have on the ship? 
Uh, we have shutter lamps specifically on the ship. They are used for signaling, but I'm sure that if the shutter is left on, and I think it, it might be about then, that you, you know, you see a light just kind of swing on over as uh, Hasalkin is checking them out now that the ship's kind of going. But yeah, so yeah, it's, it makes sense. Then so. yeah, ignore that cut. You do have light. Cool. Um, do I still use the calico slink as a? Yeah, go for it. Okay. It's an extra set of eyes, either way. <laughs> If anything's uh, locked, if anything's locked, things. you let me know. Okay. Uh, I just, it, that's 3D6, right? That's 3D6. Okay. I've lost the channel. Okay. Ah, uh, dice rolling. That's triumph. That's good. Okay. Six, four, one. That is a triumph indeed. Um, so with your triumph, there, there is indeed some hive-in script on kind of some of the interior parts of the carriage itself. A lot of the stuff that might have been more decorative on the outside has, has long been kind of eroded away or eaten by mold or, you know, whatever weirdness happens down in the under eaves. Um, but because this carriage was inside the mansion, which itself kind of insulated it somewhat uh, from the, the general negative effects of being down there for so long. You can still read a few, a few bits of it. Um, the carriage seems to belong to some kind of ancient noble, possibly? You can see something resembling like a house crest. It's not something you recognize. Um, but you can also make out a few letters in Hyvin talking about kind of, this is the property of such and such. And most of the name sadly is missing. Uh, okay, I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> There's slowly a chorus of I'm 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 as as like the spiders get excited and like a bunch of spiders probably actually kind of swarm together back into something resembling kips uh, as they all get super excited. Um, and if if this thing is um is this like in the wood of the carriage? Uh, it's probably embossed on some metal somewhere. Okay, I basically wanted to ask if I could try to like take it off. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you, you're you're slowly destroying your first bit of cargo by pulling bits off of it, both you and Abida. But you go for it. Um, <laughs> give yourself a resource, a piece of salvage. Um, what say, hive embossed plaque, perhaps? I suppose. Cool. Yeah. Um, and as this is happening, I think uh, some of the spiders are like cheering Obida on now that you know we've we've gotten to get in there and see what's up. Um and then some of the spiders are probably looking at um Agdis and going like so so are you do you do you see in the dark? Do you do you like um that's a kind of a complex question. Uh, not particularly well, but I mean it's been very dark for a very long time. So I guess I just kind of got used to it. Right. Um, more importantly, do you know where this carriage is from? Uh, no. I mean, the, the mansion itself, probably, but don't ask where the mansion was from. It was just a bit of old kind of salvage location as far as we were concerned. Back I was in the checking. Day. I kind of was wondering if, if, if you remember the first place where it popped up, because you said it popped up and then it went back down and then it popped up again, right? Yeah, there's definitely been some up and down motion over the last 40 years. Um, this thing has probably risen, what, two, three times? Wow. Neat. Yeah. It's just, the spider just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, just, just keeps on plodding along back there. Um, well, that seems to be a good time to uh, kind of meet you up, uh, probably around the steering column of this ship the something anchor. Um, I'm assuming by this point, Basil, you would have uh, maybe realized that you didn't have to keep beating the heart constantly, um, even if it was only by missing a beat and seeing that it was still beating itself. Um, yeah, blame a spider. Um, and that means that, uh, Haselkin, you've been kind of exploring and making the occasional course adjustment, I believe. Yeah, I think that that's, if, if we're going to, because I, I think mostly what, what we're still doing, you know, we're sailing up and out to, to get out. So it's a lot of just sailing around a large hole. And so once you get the ship set and especially uh, 
given that we've got the underscales and the the bite going, you know, once you find a good groove, you just got to make sure we're still on it. So yeah, I think he's spending his time kind of looking out. And I think that's also why, why he's looking around with the shutter lamps because he's shining down to see what can be seen there. And also shining down in there to see if anyone might respond back, shining out the waves to, you know, see if there's any, because there were lots of ships that were rushing here before because th this was the emergence of a new spit, which has since been swallowed by the lignin tide. But, uh, so yeah, I think he, he's flashing around with the, looking around with the, the shutter lamps, you know, flashing around idly to look, but I mean, exploring all the while, because you have to look at this new place. So it's kind of like one, one hand out. It's all just kind of rote memorization shining, but still like looking around as is. So. Yeah. You did actually make a point of saying last time that you had sent out a message for other ships that may have been nearby, that it was dangerous and you should stay away. And I think that the kind of fruition of that, um, will be now because there is another ship nearby as you make your way onto the very topmost layer of the thrash um, and your ship I'm assuming slows down for a moment or at least until you decide your next course um, both of action and literal course uh, you do see another ship um, it is sitting on the waves nearby lit up with a kind of series of moth lanterns around the hull uh, none of them actually quite attached to the ship all of them floating vaguely nearby it does not look like a salvaging vessel let me get a sense of what kind of vessel it does look like something unusual uh it's almost like a cook pot like a massive cook pot um there's no real front or back to it that you can see like there's there's no prow or heading um, and the lanterns spaced around it, and, and as you kind of draw a little bit closer, you can see they're all on poles, just these poles of moth lanterns, the poles so thin you can barely see them. Um, they are coming out just at random spaced intervals. Uh, it, it, it's not moving, but it must have moved to get here. Um, there's also no, no kind of hail from inside, no, no cry, although it is very well lit. Somebody want to go check that out? I can give them the keys to the strike. I I can say hello. I have handled uh, communications between ships before. If if we'd like to do a parlay, uh, I, I sure yes. Uh, if anyone would like to come with, I there's space on the strike, right? You know, I I got a feel for this how this thing moves. We're good. Yes. Yeah, right, she's tricky. Pulls to the left. Be careful. Don't kick on the overburner unless you're feeling like going. You will go. I think it's a, a, almost a law that all the best wild fish gets pulled to the left. <laughs> the Shrike is among the best. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll toss him. I'll toss him the key. I feel like the key is just like a, like a just a cylinder that I've like hammered some piece of metal to the end. You just have to like jam in the side. And like I mean, like I said, there's like a rip cord. So I feel like you literally like jam it in, twist it, and it just becomes the handle of the rip cord. Oh, that's like, lovely. I really yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, that's big. the key. <laughs> big fan, big fan of that. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll toss that to you. And then can I do something to start healing some aspects? Um, just so I can uh, do as soon, as soon as we montage, you can, yes. Okay, okay. You may, if you decide to drop anchor rather than travel through the night, uh, you'll get a chance to do. I'm going to push for us dropping anchor at that time. So yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think it makes sense to like check out the ship and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you will soon get a chance to heal because you you do need it. Yes, um, yes. a little banged up. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, in fact, are you are you kind of lowering the shrike to the waves? I know you you hammered those docking clamps onto the side. Yeah, I like to imagine it doesn't sit too high off the waves. So I like to think you start it and then you just like smack the clamps and you just kind of fall a couple um then you're in the waves yeah um well actually as you are kind of readying the shrike that kind of cauldron ship begins to slowly move towards you anybody uh anybody seeing the it's coming our way say it's like good thing is a bad thing i don't know if it's just, what it's is it a good thing is a bad thing well it's not hailing us oh. so i'm gonna go with mm. I, 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 I mean, be, before the disaster happened, I warned all the ships that there would be a disaster, and this is a ship that came despite that, so they're either a ship equipped to deal with a disaster or to deal with what's left of a disaster. Uh, so, I hope they're 
errant surgeons. Oh, that would be wonderful. They, I mean, this was supposed to be a new spit. That this would be a great place to, you know, set up a. a it would have been would have been a great neighborhood. It would have been, um, and in fact, you're not massively off with that because as the the ship, the cauldron ship, crawling towards you, uh, goes down one of the waves of the wild sea, this kind of the dip and swell of the canopy, uh, you see a how it's moving, and b what that cauldron is full of. Uh, it is moving on a kind of a ring around the bottom of this ceramic cauldron of centipedal style legs, uh, just crawling over the wave tops. And as it dips down uh, towards you, you see it's full of something dark and slightly wet, um, mulchy, in fact. It's a soil ship. They fill with dirt? Yeah. Soil traders are not particularly common because soil itself is a pretty rare resource. But one of the things that a root quake can bring from the under eaves is old dirt, like big fragments of land. Of all the people that would come here for something like that and stick around, these are the kind of people that would. That is filled with dirt. Well, that's a good thing, right? It's just if it's filled with dirt, they're just here to get more dirt. They're not here to fill it with what else would you fill it with? I don't know. What do you think they make the dirt out of, huh? Um, <laughs> dirt? Luck, determination, and the past. None of those are materials. But they're all very true, you hear, kind of called <laughs> over. Um, and part of that dirt kind of shirks itself off, and a figure rises from it. Uh, you can't tell what bloodline they are, even though they're reasonably close to you now, just because they are completely covered in either soil or soil on rags wrapped around them. Um, and dirt woven well, they, they, they into They don't sound awful. Uh... Asla just goes to the, the, the bow of the ship and just waves his hand like, hi! Hello! There, there is a wave back, and the arm that waves is probably longer than you were expecting. That's fine. Yep. <laughs> Asla, okay, we should, we should go say hi. We should go say hi. Oh. Look at the legs! Look at the legs! Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's extremely, uh, like, knowing knowing also that these, these people are, are dirt traders, like, dirt traders are people that everyone likes and respects in one way or another, because dirt traders bring life. If you have a dirt trader, you can farm if you have a defensible enough spot. And, yeah. like, these are these are people dirt 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 traders know how to use their craft and oh goodness, the food. Have you have you have you ever eaten the food that it is grown by a dirt trader? Oh goodness! Oh, I, I hope oh. they have snacks. And I think he like rips the cord on the the strike. It's just ready to yeah. zoom. I, I if Basil like, wanted to go, there's space. Right. Yeah. I feel I feel like we should warn them about the centipedes. Yeah. They've got centipedes. Um. I got this. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. I got this. That, that seems like I'm gonna call out, and I'm gonna. I mean, I'm just gonna say my dialogue, but I would like to say this in brass tongue to see if I get any like mercantile yeah. response. Yep, yeah, that is the official trading language. Um, yeah, just danger in the vicinity. Are you looking to trade? Or are you just, just covered in dirt? In that case, <laughs> uh, responding also in brass tongue, that same voice. Uh, always looking to trade and always danger in the vicinity. This is the wild sea after all. These are the rustling ways, but don't worry. We have weapons. And the, um, the the cauldron ship just tips a little more, and some dirt slops over the side. Oh no! Wait, we don't have weapons. What we have is imbalance. Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> they kind of write themselves, and they go back. Now we have weapons, and another arm raises up um, to kind of join the arm that was raised in a wave, and you can see a very unimpressive-looking rifle in it. Like it is, it is a rifle, but it is obviously under the dirt with this person, so it is completely clogged. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have spiders up there so you can see uh, above the? You have to see to shoot those, right? Uh, seeing, seeing, seeing is overrated. Um, are you gonna? Can we come aboard? Any yes. objections? Um, he says yes. Yeah, yeah. Takes helm because Halsakin is left and no one else is at it. 
immediately heads towards their ship to go say hi. We could just let the Shrike. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I was gonna say if the Falcon was taking the Shrike, then you can uh, hop over there, pick him up, and bring him back to your ship, which yeah, he seems entirely fine with. We did drop anchor, so we'd have to pull anchor if we wanted to move the ship oh. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Come to us, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the cauldron soil ship will drop anchor too, and by drop anchor, I mean the centipedal legs around it just contract suddenly and it just drops like, you know, five foot or so deeper into the waves and then just sits and rests. Oh, I like that. <clears throat> Asil cannot wave walk, but all he wants to do is go wave walk to see that shit. <laughs> I think uh, as as uh, Hasalkin gets up to them, unless there's anyone else that wants to do something, like as he, you know, parks the Shrike, as it were, and you know, goes to greet the I think he, he reaches out an old hand, but in the, the holes in his body, you know, there's a nice little musical jaunt. So there's a, a small burst of wind that blows off loose bits of dirt. Guy still has covered in dirt, but it's not going to be a big mess in the Shrike. Yeah. It's being that's, at least semi considerate. <laughs> that's very considerate to the Shrike zone, definitely. Um, yeah. In that case, yeah, some, some, of that, some of that kind of burst of, uh, kind of, burst of gust of wind does de dirt this guy uh, just a little bit. And uh, you can make out what he is. Uh, he is an ironbound. Um, but he's an ironbound where uh, his, his limbs are, are still made of kind of ship parts and, and various old bits of wreck. Um, but his actual torso and head are a beautifully carved prow, like a figurine that used to be part of the prow. Um, like like the, the old ship's figurehead type thing. Um, so, yeah, he's he's wonderfully put together and then a bit of a wreck uh he's also covered in dirt and wrapped in rags but you know i i am... he's perfect yeah. that's very true <laughs> i i am uh, honored to get to ferry you to our ship uh you who have survived much uh <laughs> goodness but oh yeah survived a lot me um but to be honest it's hard not to when you're made of wood and metal and stuff and surrounded by dirt. The amount of people that want to rob dirt, huge. You would not believe it. He explains this, he's going to get onto the Shrike and be ferrying back. But the amount of people that come prepared, actually very low. They'll come over, they'll board, they've got cutlasses, they've got guns, and then it's like, oh, right, take all the dirt you want. How are you going to carry it? No idea. Uh, out of respect and deference to an honored person in Hasalkin's culture, he does not correct him that he is talking about him being an ironbound and quite literally the souls of a crew of a sunken ship come together and push. He is he he listens happily and smile like with with the, someone who has the interest and eagerness of someone who is genuinely interested, but also just like this. It is not important to correct this, but. Uh, <laughs> I, this then, is yeah, this I, is part of the honor of getting to ferry you. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it, only, it only takes another kind of thirty seconds to get him back to your ship. It's a long thirty seconds in terms of how much information you accrue. Um, not a bad thirty seconds, definitely an interesting thirty seconds, but a long thirty seconds. Um, and he, as you as you kind of move back towards those docking clamps and, and kind of maneuver the Shrike inside, which is probably not that easy for you. It does drift to the left after all. Um, he doesn't even wait for you to be docked. He just kind of puts one arm on the railing of your new ship and just pulls himself upwards, almost like an orangutan, like just that very easy limber motion. I, I think Hasalkin, instead of taking it to the docking clamps, he takes it to the underthresh platform and just kind of, he, he doesn't put it up, but just like puts it on the ship. He's like, I do not know exactly how yet to put this away. This is something I must learn. I will put it somewhere safe for now. Slowly beaches it on the platform. <laughs> Just chewing into the wood of the under thrash platform. <laughs> I, I yeah. think he's he's got enough skill to kill it and use momentum to slide it up. He, he is a rootless. This is this is part of his, yeah. he has spent his his life you know sailing around on these things when the ships have him. Once he turned eleven, I guess. <laughs> it's a rootless after all. He's got the the jet ski slide onto the you know. Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make my way back and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll drop the clamps from, from ship side and make my way and do the thing while people are talking. Well, the, um, the ironbound soil trader kind of 
wanders through from your Underthrash platform up to the, the deck, the main deck, and looking over your ship with some very appreciative noises as he does so. Um, he greets a few parts of the ship, not the rest of you, um, but like as he goes past the galley, oh, lovely galley, love it, good to see you, kind of makes his way up. And then when he's on the deck, uh, just looks around and goes, this, this is, this is a nice ship, got a tree, got a nice tree. That's, that's all, I'm very impressed. Well, it's old though, isn't the it? Tree, the tree it's is old. very cool. The ship is very cool. I, I'm is... hoping the tree maybe can talk to the ship and tell me about how old the, sh the ship is, but I, I, I haven't tried yet. Can you talk to the tree? Or the ship? I, I, can, I can talk to anything. Um, whether it's going to answer, very different matter. That's true. That's very yeah. true. I, I found that's... that, yeah, that's my experience as well. And some of the like spiders off to the side are like, there's another ship down there. Like, God, that, that just happens. That, that's rude. Sometimes they do respond, though. So it, do, it does make it worth trying. That's fair. Um, yeah, the, um, the Iron Balcony turns to, to the, the kind of conglomerate of you, uh, including uh, Agdis, who is standing a little bit off to the side. Um, and, and makes this kind of long, expansive gesture with one of his arms again and goes, it is, honestly, lovely to meet you all. I saw, as, you know, sure you know, uh, some signals, hazards in the area, danger, but, you know, I was already on my way. I thought, who's going to take me down? No one. I mean, people have tried. No one succeeded. And I thought I'd just wait when I got here and there was nothing but a massive hole. Um... What happened? Nippies. You heeded my signal. Well, yeah, you, you don't see a signal and not heed it. You don't want to know what happened here, man. Centipedes. Mean centipedes. 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 Not hmm. yours. Well, maybe yours. This, this is actually a, a great moment. Um, so I watched a centipede suck a guy's soul out, and I have the aspect... Um, Chief of a hundred stories. Every time you see a one a Newport wonder or horror while on a journey, you get a whisper. I, I marked Meyer for that. Did I get a, a whisper in response you, for seeing you this? Did indeed. Yes, sir. We took quite a lot. Uh, well, I got one for the mansion falling, but not one for the the, the soul getting sucked out yet. Oh, in that case, uh, you know what? That does make sense. It, it, the whisper might come in like the telling of the, these things where it's like this is where it's now coming through because I'm having to you know relive it, the trauma of you know so anyway sorry for interrupting that but it felt important to push through on that so cool yeah are you actually uh, are you going to describe these centipedes I know Abide is definitely not saying that you'd rather not know um, probably true in fact um, seeing as you're talking to a thing about soul sucking centipedes a thing that is literally a soul in a load of ship stuff um, so, hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, since y'all have mentioned these soul sucking centipedes, I think he, he lets the others take what point he can on that first because you know you've mentioned it already, but uh, he's gonna join in the telling. I think it's it's like a mosaic of spiders yelling, just like. The centipedes, they were really creepy. But I mean, they were big. You know, I mean, we're small. They were really big. They were, they were probably as big as your centipedes, which are pretty large. But I'm kind of scared of your centipedes now because maybe your, your centipedes eat souls. Well, I mean, technically our centipedes aren't centipedes. They're just centipede legs. It's not like we encased a load of centipedes inside a big ceramic ship. That would be a barbaric thing to do. Although, are you sure, are you sure there aren't, are you sure there aren't centipede souls involved? Very, yeah, very, very, oh, pretty sure. Well, I hope hey, not. That's probably Wait. good. Plural? Plural, there's plural. Are there more people on the ship back there? Oh, you got me. And he kind of claps his hands together. So much more of that soil is just pushed aside. And there are at least 30, 40 more figures on that ship than originally you thought. Um... They are all covered in rags and, well, soil, as you might expect. A, a huge collection of various bloodlines. There's other ironbound there. There's Ketra. You can see from the kind of semi-translucent skin in the moonlight. Um, a, a few of them wave back, oddly enough. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. 
there's Arden, uh, a, a decent chunk of Equus as well, and even a couple of Gal. Um, they kind of stand, it's an impressive display at first, and they just kind of fall about laughing. Ah, it's not just one dirt farmer, it's yeah. dirt farmers. <laughs> Well, he I is mean, excited. Like you, you've got to forgive the deception, I suppose, if you could call it that. I'm something of the the welcoming party. When you've got a lot of dirt, it is valuable stuff, and people do try and get one over on you, especially if they think it's just you. Um, of course, they rarely succeed because it's not just me. Uh, but you seem like nice swords, and you didn't try and kill me, which is, you know, I wouldn't say it's rare, but it's not as common as I'd like. Um, so, yeah, well met, you know. Well met. Yeah. Hello. As I just, just throws the eyeballs at him. <laughs> Look at him. They're the eyeballs of the centipede. Do That's this whole not, go back not, over an, a, not an eyeball, B, not a centipede, although you're close on both counts. That is a chunk of amber, which is used as an eye, and centipede. Halfway there, spectropede is what you're thinking of. Mm. Thank oh, you. you've seen these before? Oh, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Oh. You you don't you don't last long as an iron bound if you don't learn the things that eat literally eat souls. They 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 don't eat just souls. Uh, one of them consumes uh, a bit of a whisper from my 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 essence, my being. Uh, it ripped it from me in the effort and attempt. Uh, well, that's rude. It was, but um, it's 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 okay. I, I I now think learning back on it. I, I I it it is it is fine that the whisper gave itself. Thus, I could continue. Uh, and and it's it's good. Sometimes that's a, that's a positive attitude. I like yeah. that attitude. In fact, I think I like you, and I'm very much like your ship. This is a nice ship. It's an old ship, and it's a no offense, it's a bit of a dead ship. As opposed to? Well, you know, there's a lot of ships that you can feel something about them, right? That liveliness. Take it from me, I used to be a ship, at least part of a ship, but that, that kind of, you know, they, they've crewed, they've got memories, laughter, happiness. This one has a lot of quiet. Well, it does have a giant beating heart inside of it, so yeah, it's... I was going to say partially yeah. alive. It, it, it has not been... totally quiet but what does that heart do does it laugh does it cry does it tell stories no it just makes the same repetitive thumping motion again and again and again I, well, and judging from the well, way the ship feels hasn't been doing that for a long time i i, th yes. I think i think truly it's it's, it's not that the, the, the ship is is dead it, it has no life it's, it's been spending time with the cousin of death's sleep it's been rest for 40 years yeah. there's been no one to, to, to bring it adventure. There's been no one to laugh upon it. Uh, there, yeah, there's, there's... As, you're, as you're saying this, uh, Hasalkin, you do over here add this in the background saying just to himself, had a crew once, I just didn't have a crew once. But like, it obviously is not meant for anyone else. <laughs> it's, it's just no. him talking to himself, bless oh. him. Or I guess. Buddy. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be telling stories if you just woke up from a, 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 a four decades slumber, would you? Maybe Hasalkin would be. I feel like Hasalkin might. That's fair. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, you could probably do with a bit of comfort, rest, something. I don't just mean you, the ship too. Uh, do you want to drink? Yes. <laughs> that one yes is all he needs. Um, <laughs> He beckons over to the soil ship and it pulls a bit closer to you. And a few of the, not all 40, 30, 40, that would be way too much. But a few other figures kind of leap down. Again, an Ector, an Arden. And they bring with them, um, again, kind of rag wrapped packages and start unfurling them on the deck. Uh, they are bringing you a literal veritable feast. Hasalkin's nudging Basil. They, they have snacks. They have snacks. This is the they best. This is exactly what I had hoped for and dreamed. Oh. Oh, this, yes. Strangerman. <laughs> Strangerman. Did we teach your name, Strangerman? Oh, uh, no, you didn't ask, but I, I'm not going to take offense. 
Um, my name's Paraman. Paraman Saltspit. Nice to meet you, Paraman. Thank you for the booze. Nice to meet you too. I didn't get uh, yours, although I can tell they're going to be good ones. Obida. Pleasure. A good one. Puzzle. Also a good one. Strong name. Uh, some spiders start saying, and then a bunch of other spiders say a bunch of other things. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm expecting that. Yeah. Um, the majority you, is still saying that. But you get the kind of nod that people give when they're not quite understanding something. So it's like, oh. It's, it, it's Kim. That's Kim. Stop, Kim. Yeah, also a strong name, if a little scattered. And uh, you find uh, any points to you, Vesalkin? Uh, as, as with uh, many rootless, my name was said before me here, but uh, my name is Hasalkin. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, th it's only fine names. Fine names for fine people, or at least uh, seem to be fine people so far. And you, and he gestures over to, to Agdis, who just very plainly goes, Agdis. Um, he's dead. Oh, uh, believe me, I, I, I know. We can, you know, soul see soul like attracts like you know it's, it's one of those things just clarifying for politeness's sake no oh, entirely fair um but uh he's still sorry i shouldn't in the third person you still eat right and he points over to agnes and agnes is like do you know what i honestly don't know because he really hasn't eaten for 40 years, bless him. Would, would, would you like to try? You should try. Their food is very, very good. What should, should we eat first, please? Ozzy, yeah. Ozzy loves eating. Ozzy's mostly, mostly ghosts. Um, and they, they do indeed bring out, like I said, a veritable feast. Um, you can, if you wish, uh, treat this as a montage. They did say if you dropped anchor, you would get one. Um, and this montage is, is, it's not a full-blown party. Like there's not singing and dancing and music, unless any of you choose to sing, dance and muse. Uh, yeah, I thought so, Rick. Uh, <laughs> no, I have a different idea, but it, I thought will be singing, dancing and music as part of my idea, but that's it's fine, we'll come back to that. Um, but what there is, is a lot of food. Uh, most of this is soil grown vegetables, which are pretty, they're, they're, they're not a massive rarity, but fresh ones are a rarity. Like they are growing this stuff straight from the soil that they hold in their own ship. This is as fresh as it gets. So this might be the first time for some of you to try things like potatoes and radishes. Like these are good hearty vegetables. Um, but they also uh, bring out, I believe Abida, you were interested in the drinks. Oh yeah, got plenty to forget. Yeah, to try. Mud, mud wine. Mmm. Mud wine is at least 70% mud and probably 20% wine and 10% things that made their way into the bottle sometime during that process. You drink it fast enough, you can't tell. Very true. Yeah, it's got very uh, nice, very nice oaky and, and piney hints in it, you know? A little, a little bit of earthy flavor. Those are not hints. Those are, <laughs> those are overtones. You drink it with a smile, because otherwise you get a mouthful of dirt. <laughs> it's filters, yeah. <laughs> I like this running bit that like Mothra and like the mouths are like like when Obida talks it just kind of shifts like kind of cartoonishly kind of shifts and then when he eats or drinks things it just like disappears into the fur like pop up very furry yeah, yeah. 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 Does, does he does he have a little proboscis though for like drinking again I like to imagine it's all a mystery it's just <laughs> something, something's yeah. happening in the fur fair enough you don't get to see it. that's private bathroom business. There's, there's something going on back there. Yeah, what it is for you. <laughs> All right, so um, let's work out this montage. What are each of you doing? Let's keep these, these tasks short. Uh, how, are, uh, how are people from the dirt ship coming over with their feces? They have moved the uh, the kind of soil ship as close to you as possible, so they're, they're literally just jumping the distance now. I'm jumping the distance to go look at their ship. That is entirely good. So you're exploring the soil ship, you're healing Abida, uh, Kit and herself. I think uh, some of the spiders are definitely getting drunk, which is probably going to be helpful later because they'll stop moving around so much. Um, it'll be easier to hurt into one being again. Um, some of them probably, depending on how 
far they can get from the rest of the others without like losing brain soul existence coherency uh, coherence coherency uh probably checking out the other ship but i think the the, the bulk of them are actually uh like running around um oh my goodness i've already forgot the iron bounds name uh paramon paramon i think they're i'm um, kind of running around paramon just like following him as he walks around the ship and I'm like yeah yeah so so that tree right yeah um what what kind of tree do you think just like tons of questions Sorry. about the goddamn tree Okay, so majority talking to Pan about a tree. Yes. Um, and Hasalkin. Um, I'm. Hmm, I want to. Now I'm trying to wonder if I should try and get us a significant amount of dirt because what I want to do is plant a flower. Uh, uh. Yeah. Well, I've got this spectral flower as a specimen, and I feel like cultivating a spectral flower on this ship, especially. I don't know what it'll do. But I feel like it will be valuable for us, especially as someone who can literally move. He can pollinate this flower with a dance, I guess, if need be. So, you know, it's fine. Uh, so I don't know if I should, like, try to get dirt from them or if there's just enough dirt around where I can just, you know, find a place and study the ship and plant a flower there, which also gives us an opportunity to uh, explore the ship some more. So, so this is a good point, actually. Um because, as I said, they are kind of, it's kind of dirt cascading off these people at various points as they move. Yeah. Uh, but none of it seems to be left on your deck. Um, it, it's something in the way that they move, the motions they make, the places they choose to sit. Whatever falls off of them a few minutes later has been collected up again and hidden back in, like, folds of rag and robe. Uh, yeah. Because they are... I mean, they're friendly, but they're still traders, and that's product of their shedding. They're essentially using it as a kind of free advertisement, like, look at the quality of this stuff that we've got, uh, but you can't have it for free. So, yeah. Think, think of the, the soil ship as something like a very dirty, not in a weird way, a very dirty casino. Like, they have literally now got you having free food and free drink, and you're about to try and buy some soil, because why not? Yeah. Then yeah, 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 yeah. He's, In that case, let's start, let's start with you, Miss How are you going to get your hands on this soil? Oh, he's he's trading entertainment at this party. He that's he he's going to. It is now going to definitely be song and dance for these folks, and also leaning into the fact that you know he uh, is the one who gave them the signaling warning to slow down. Like you know, hey. It, so I think that that's. Uh, Part of it too, but I think that uh, one of the one of the great things, especially now that H Hasalkin is in a position like this, this is this is what he does. This is what he has been doing his entire life, especially as a, a member of the Lifted Mass Group list. So he is dancing and singing, but not just in one language, in three, all at the same time, with the pattern sash attached to him, is able to use in conjured, you know, singing almost in signaling as best it were. He's able to kind of create a chorus in movement with himself, and then in old hand, he's you know creating whatever little other bits and then there's just the uh low sour coming through as well so he's just singing and there's the flute so i guess four languages because music so you know, it's actually a really lovely idea that you probably literally could perform in four languages at once yeah that's it's what uh Hasalkin does uh the, the other one being dance uh as well but it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he yeah, is. Yeah, roll for it. Um, you yeah. were definitely doing that. You definitely draw a crowd because there's a decent number of them there. I'm actually going to give you an advantage, a 1d6 advantage on that roll because the way you are doing this, you are hitting kind of like the maximum amount of their interest that you can because the various different bloodlines and their origins, they would each find something unique in what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're salespeople, but so is he. But the thing that he sells is culture and safety, wonder and the sea for everyone so you know let's let's do some trading uh yeah he's got one uh is edge of tides since we're leaning into him a, a, you know being able to attract all the sailors uh, tides one for flourish and then there's just the two advantage dice from everything that's going on here like that makes sense. Just, yeah yeah uh that is six four three three that is a triumph for the twist okay um, so let me be official about this and check out the acquisition role. Uh, let's see exactly what we got. Because I need to get used to the playtest D rules as well myself, even though I wrote them. Because, um, you know, it's hard to keep all that stuff in your head. Um, so resource role results. That was a triumph of the twist, right? Correct. Or, yeah. 
Okay, so you gain a solid example of whatever resource you were looking for, untainted by waves or use or time. So you have uh, probably some fertile earth. Oh yeah. I... Uh, as a twist, the resource you gain has a unique or positive tag provided by you or another player at the table. So anyone have any ideas of what this positive tag might be? I'm looking to grow a spectral flower. So if anything helps with that, any tags you can think of that kind of lean into being good for cultivating ghost flora. In, uh, I on the nose, but it makes sense to me that something like that, I don't know why I have scissors. Uh, it makes sense to me that oh. it grows by moonlight or something like that. I, it also kind of, I, I think of fertile grave dirt actually yeah i am i am happy with that if you're happy to go with it yeah yeah some fertile grave dirt i think because he's he's after this they're, they're, he's gonna tell me he's looking for dirt and it's just that what do you what do you what do you want to do i'm gonna grow a ghost flower yeah but i do love that grown by moonlight idea keep that in mind especially as you are growing a spectral flower i believe yes. that should definitely be part of it i think so too i think yeah. so too then yeah, they would hand over some of this grave dirt. In fact, um, if you let slip what you're wanting to do with it, they'd probably give that to you specifically. Uh, like, we, we could just give them any old earth. Like, you know, you wouldn't know, but we would know, and we'd feel bad. Like, that kind of thing. Like, they're giving you genuinely good quality merchandise. He's, he's like, I, 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 this is all very nice and kind, but I am an ectus. I would know. And he, like, puts his hand into some of the dirt, and it's like... <laughs> that is very true. Access to eat with their hands, sort of, sometimes, depending on your personal head can. Um, uh, I, okay, I love, I was gonna say, let's go to you, but I also love that face you just pulled. Yes, <laughs> it was established in some of the, the, the test games early on that, um, an ectus at a feast would probably just slam their hand down the table and slowly absorb whatever it landed on. Um, because or, most of them have mouths, yeah, so, or feet, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that whole body did that. They could just like soak, just roll in it. Yeah, that like would the sun. Um, or alcohol, it's fine. Anyways, but yeah, um, um, Basil, you were going to explore the soil ship. Yeah, Basil just dives straight into the dirt. Like he is, sees that they're close, and he's like, "I'm going in." So he dives uh, as in. you do so, yeah, as you do so, and ours isn't nearby. Just like, don't you try and nick anything now. I just want to see the legs. Oh. then you can indeed kind of burrow slash tunnel your way down to the interior of the ship. Um, there are hatches at the bottom of the, the soil holding compartment, and they do lead into an undership section. Once you're down there, you realize there's also ladders going up the side, and you probably got to climb at the top too, but burrowing, way more fun. Um, I didn't know. Yeah, it happens. Um, the centipede legs, they are indeed not attached to centipedes. In fact, now you're right up close to them, they are just as ceramic as the rest of the hull. Um, they are kind of, they've got these internal mechanisms. They're actually quite finely made uh, and they connect to the outer part through to the inner part. There's almost like leaf rubbery cups around them to, to make a decent seal. Um, but yeah, they're, um, they, they do indeed ring the entire ship. This ship could move in any direction if it wanted to. Yeah, that's incredible. That's me as a Terry saying, that's wild. Um, um, actually, I can I can give you a whisper for that if you like, because you have just found a genuinely interesting thing for a rattle hand. Heck yeah. And I'm assuming you're not going to just break off a bit and steal something. No. But, yeah. No. Then a whisper seems good, if that works for you. Yeah. Whisper is always good. Yeah. Um, then take the whisper unexpectedly fine machinery. All right. Yeah. And if you want, you can spend the rest of your time there just kind of talking to whoever they have as an engineer. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Kip or Abida, who wants to go next? Um, I'm going to just get mine out of the way. Just Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you're going to heal. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say, before you do, everyone can have a second montage task specifically for eating because uh, you have been provided with free food and drink. And with that, you can either have uh, a mark of healing or a one-track benefit hearty meal. It's up to you. Take 
I tick off there. All right. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to use the salvage of um, of the carriage, I guess, breaking pieces off that to, to heal my manifold bow. I just kind of want to imagine making a new one. Yeah, one. makes sense. Oh, out of pre-verdant wood, too. Yeah. Let's make it like a like a Q-do bow, so it has like a shorter bottom and like a tall top. So you get that big old top draw. Um, can somebody help me? <laughs> I don't really yeah. have skills to do this. I would love to help you. I think some of the spiders would be hanging out around the carriage anyway, trying to talk to the dead tree. So, yeah, exactly. by which I mean the wood the carriage is made out of. Gotcha. I'd help, but I'm currently examining lens. Unfortunately. <laughs> That's, that's all right. Priorities, dude. Should have caught me earlier indeed. before I left. Priorities. Me dives in as you say, can you help? <laughs> and in the um, we have a cargo crane on the ship, right? That's kind of like built in help. Well, I mean, the bow is not that big. Oh, no, no, I'm saying but for like suspending the carriage to get you a good spot oh, to break off okay. and get you, yeah. get you like <laughs> some good wood. Uh, that's a bad sentence to say. <laughs> Use this cargo crane to get you some good wood. Uh, that's a sentence we can delete. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's staying in. Everything's staying in. Oh, I meant uh, from reality. Oh, okay, that works too. Uh, okay, so how are you how are you putting this um how are you putting this role together? Assume that you do have a bit of help from both from Contepsia and from some of the other kind of um, soil traders around you because they will be just as willing to not help specifically but definitely lean in and point out things that you're doing wrong <laughs> oh, thank you like the old men that sit and watch construction yep it's, they don't even uh, say anything it's just you, you start to make a move and mm, yeah. <laughs> arms behind the back no yeah. um yeah so i'll just do iron I guess. Yeah. um uh uh you are literally forcefully reshaping pre wood into the shape of your old bow, essentially. So. I guess, I mean, this is a bit of a stretch, but I've seen Ray use an axe to sense something. So uh, I'm going to say break to like snap the wood off and shape and do some carving, even though it's the inverse of what I'm trying to do ultimately. Uh, That's the first fair. Step. Um, but I will give you a cut of one on this, seeing as you are you're breaking as much as you are mending at the same time. Okay, maybe I won't use a skill. I'll, I'll, I'd rather avoid a cut knowing how the math works out here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have a single dice. Uh, so I'll, I'll take I'll take iron and then I'm, I'll go fuck myself. Uh, and then I guess I'll take <laughs> <laughs> the bonus die from the help. The yeah, bonus die. Yeah, you do get a bonus die from the help. That's true. Um, so I'll just roll 2d6 here. Okay. Oh, geez, Louise. I'm not going to, if I get more damage, I'm going to be livid. Uh, you can't get damage from these uh, from a healing rule, uh, thankfully. Okay. Yeah. Um, Does that oh, sort of look can't? different here? Uh, so it's, oh, it's, it's, no, it's, you can. I think it oh, is. It's in the book. Does it say yeah. you can here? Uh, oh, yeah. gosh, Pretty sure change? healing rolls can, yeah. Oh, man. Look at that. Jesus. That's uh, an extra mark of damage to an aspect ship uh, rating injury track or mine. Oh, you got yep. crueler. Um, yes, it did I get crueler. It's been like that for a while, though, hasn't it? Uh, eh, whatever. I think it was like that before, but it wasn't as explicitly pointed out. Gotcha. Okay. R.I.P. Yeah, I think What's it just said things you? could get worse, but it didn't. Yeah, uh, I think it's because we codified it as a triumph is now explicitly healing two marks rather than like it might be two marks or whatever. So, yeah. So I got a conflict with a twist. So one box on an aspect and then I don't consume the resource. So Yeah, in that case, uh, seeing as you hadn't actually added the resource you were using, um, add like what pre verdant wood, I suppose, is a, a bit of salvage. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then and I will get one mark back. Bring back my manifold bow. Hey, it's still not perfect. Uh, probably because you were fixing it by repeatedly breaking things and jamming them onto it. But you know, your rattle hand's not there. It's the best you could do. I can shoot things. Yeah. Yeah, whoopsie. Sorry about that one. <laughs> um, okay. And let's finish with Kiptexia. You wanted to talk to a tree or something vaguely similar. Well, actually, um, you seem you, the ship's really cool, right? You think the ship's cool? I'm talking to um, Paramount. Uh, Paramount, Paramount. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, it's extremely cool. It's a it's a lovely ship. I just wish it was a bit livelier. Right. Um. Uh. Could you? Mm, 
So I can, I can kind of talk. I don't talk to trees. That's weird. I can't do that because I'm not a tree. I think I'd have to be a tree to do that. But, but oh, you know, I a, talk to trees myself sometimes. Well, but you're, you're kind of made of trees, right? Well, I guess I'm kind of made of trees. I have some wooden stuff in here. Well, and, I think we're all essentially kind of made of trees. Right. Um, Circle what, of life. What, what I'm trying to say um, is uh, I was wondering if you might help me to try to talk to the tree that the ship is made of. I could. I, I can't promise I can do much, but I will definitely give it a try. I mean, I, I don't know if it's going to work either, but it's it's more oh. likely to work if I if I have a, a, a. Can I call you a ship? Is that okay? It's slightly insulting, but yes. Sorry. Um. Uh. No, it's, it's just uh, like it's like if I called you a spider. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get it. Um. Um. A wonder. I ship. A, you were a, a spider. A, now you're a, more. So am I. A wonder born of a ship. That works for me. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, and Kip wants to try to like basically use the from bow or is it bow? I always forget from bow to brain aspects. Uh, um, bow, yes. Yeah, to um, find out some secrets about the ship, if possible. This might not work at all, but I figure the idea, best though. chance I have is with an iron bound, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And since um, since they're so interested also in getting the ship to be livelier too, I'm like, all right, we're, we're vibing. All right, let's give it a shot. Um, let's see. I'm assuming I have to roll for this because this is a weird thing. Uh, yes, you do. Indeed. I'll <laughs> give you. Um, oh, actually, I'm not going to give you advantage. I'm going to give you increased impact for having an iron bound there with you. Okay. Um, you will find that because he can actually literally help you get some genuine information and make more sense of it. Okay. So I'll say this is tides, actually. Um, tides. And I'll go with study um from bow to brain i i i'm hoping gives me an advantage die um yeah, and i think i think that's what i got that works okay and so you said increased impact for the health yes. okay so oh, that's only three but i knew this was hard so <laughs> six four two that is a triumph um okay what is the precise wording of about a brain what information do you get use a task to study a tree of any size and learn mm -hmm. its secrets age and condition supplied by the firefly okay so age tree, tree yeah um age this is exactly the same age as the wood of the ship around it it was grown as the ship like grown from a seed as the ship was being constructed um, that is probably something a region of 70-ish years, uh, certainly for about 30 years wow. before it went down with the, um, the mansion. Neat. <clears throat> All right, another one? Uh, secrets, well, condition. Start with condition, condition. that's probably easier. <laughs> yeah, uh, condition, it's healthy. In fact, it's surprisingly healthy given the lack of light it has had for 40 years. In fact, ah. you might say it has adapted to dark environments. Okay. And then the last one is secrets. Okay. So maybe the increased impact on the secret here. Um, this is where your iron bound kind of temporary companion, Paramon, really comes into his own um, because he identifies that the fruit that this tree grows has been changed. Um, Agdis has been in this mansion and roughly around the, the kind of semi-wreck of the ship for a long time. And in Agdis's memory, it has never fruited while it was in the mansion, that there are buds of fruit growing now, like that start of fruit has come, even though you've only been out for a couple of hours. Um, it has been sitting there full of potential ready to fruit. But the fruit that it's growing now is not the fruit that it would have grown back then. Um, it is in fact growing something ship based. Did you decide last session on the precise fruit that this tree was going to give? Uh, I think 
Didn't you say deep melon? Oh yeah, that's right. That, that was yes. the specimen was a deep melon. Oh, yeah. yeah, deep melon. <laughs> um, in that case, uh, yeah, the deep melons grown on this tree, which is a really weird sentence. Uh, they are going to contain something extra. I would like you to add that to the ship sheet. In fact, nice. um, yeah, a deep just just something like a deep melon tree grows something extra. Just a little reminder for us. Got it. Please okay, do not something... type extra deep melon tree. No, that would be no. Uh, specifically something like ship related, right? So ship related, yeah. Okay. Uh, Paramount basically Paramount's like it's. This is fruit, it's good fruit, it's deep melon. Um, there's also something wooden inside, something <laughs> more than just the tree itself. Uh, so it is literally growing something ship related. Sweet, okay. okay. And with that, your montage is done in general and your night passes, as they do say, without incident. Um, you do see Agdis in conversation with a few of the other people from the soil ship, a few crew. Whatever he's talking about with them, he does not seem particularly happy with the answers. Um, but we will come to that after the break, because it is 1.20. We have, uh, let's say, roughly an hour left if we're going for an hour and a half of soft cap. An hour is, no, hours. You know what I mean. Um, we have some time. So let's take a couple of minutes of break and then come back and put a little journey on and get to a port and then you can do the things. Let's get Good. back to the session. Um, morning, as mornings often do, arrives. The moon disappears behind a thick bank of cloud. It may be morning, but it's not the brightest morning you've ever seen. Um, and the soil ship, with most of the people uh, having stayed up almost all night, uh, they kind of crawl back and leap back over and bury themselves again. How the more breathy types of those do it, you have no idea, but they seem to manage it. And the last one to leave is in fact Paramount Saltspit, who says, you, you know what? I actually had a really lovely night. You are a thoroughly enjoyable crew and your ship just a little bit more life to it now. Don't you feel it? 
Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. And in fact, uh, you do feel it mechanically. You can all heal one point of Maya. Woo! Ooh. Uh, I actually was going to ask you about that. When we fulfill drives of ours, we get to heal a Maya as well. One of my drives mm -hmm. is forge a relationship between disparate peoples, and I feel like I did that. So can I heal both my Maya? You can indeed. I also, um, during last session, one of mine is throw yourself into um, yeah, but, but throw yourself into dire situations with vigor. I feel like I literally threw myself out a window. You literally did, yes. So it'll be okay? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. My Meyer has no fear. What do I do to clear injuries? Is it going to be the same montage type stuff as... Uh, healing process, yes. Although once you're in port, uh, healing injuries is way... And healing uh, damage in general, way, way easier. I'm very, very glad you brought that up because I totally forgot my skin is currently infested with Kreser and spores. Yeah. You know, we'll kind of, oh, kind yeah. of it up. Yeah. Maybe the <clears throat> ship thing that the tree is growing is some sort of medical bay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, yeah. sensing our needs and desires like ah uh, the deep medical bay melons yes these these dumb idiots need to piece heal. Piece in the middle. each melon just has a band-aid inside in the middle god damn it eat the fruit just filled with uh just filled with aspirin like <laughs> they're all falling apart uh paramin uh, so, paramin so paramin uh upon paramin. The Hold on. Paramin leaves your ship. Uh, no, Paramin. Um, uh, yes? What's, uh, what's the name of that ship of yours? Oh, uh, give me a sec. And he shouts something over in um, probably Saprek, actually. To I think his Ectus is the one at the helm, even though the helm is indeed buried in soil. And the um, centipedal legs burst into life again. And the ship just rotates itself slightly so you can see written in low sour along the kind of the, the circular side that wasn't facing you. Um, it, it's called the Night Jar. I love it. Nice. Sick name. Thank you. I, I came up with it myself. I hope we meet each other on the wild waves again, my friend. Chance would be a fine thing. And I would love to. But for now, we have soil to find. The, whenever you meet any other dirt farmers, please tell them of us. I, uh, there, there is a, a possibility that we will do that. However, there's a higher possibility we'll just talk dirt. Sounds about right. Reasonable. Anyway, well met, and I'll maybe see you again someday. And he kind of gives it another kind of wide wave of his arm and the ship starts crawling away across the waves. Um, it is, as I said, morning, and you have a slightly more lively ship than you had the night before. Um, there are also still a few leavings of yesterday's feast, so I would like to give you a cargo item. Fresh root vegetables. Oh. The margins on these fruit and veggies must be crazy if they can give this stuff away. They, soil traders, earn a lot of stuff. Like, again, there's no real monetary exchange on the Wild Sea, but, like, they're never wanting for things for repairs and salvage and generally nice stuff to own, so. The overhead just on the floor. <laughs> um, well, I mean, when you live in dirt, everything's the, the ceiling to you. Um, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, you have a ship of your own, and you have the opportunity to go somewhere that you want to go. However... There is one member of your crew, technically a passenger, who does have somewhere in mind. Agdis still wants to head back to, uh, what was it, Slim Pickings, his home port. Which he assures you is close, hopefully, somewhere to the north. We all, we all remember our original port we were headed to, right? Yes. Cillian doesn't, but Obina does. That's fair. Um, in fact, what is the port that you were head the kind of leaving from on the stars beneath and heading back to? I'm never told. No, in that case, it's a good a good time to define it now. Um, I am going to say that the port you are leaving, the name of it is Ostraco. Ostraco. 
So each of you, give me one little bit of information, just a snippet about Ostraco. You may not be going there right now, but you can possibly visit there in the future. Um, I think it has a canal system. I think um, it's in large part built around a central tall shank and like a series of spits. It's been sort of lashed to it and the branches of the tall shank have been carved out. It's a bit of a canal. Tall shank and canal system, lovely. Uh, definitely has its own little like dialect of signaling that's like lights only um and it's like <laughs> guys you ever heard of ostracons <laughs> is it a kind of fruit <laughs> it's a kind of shrimpy thing <laughs> Oh, I, 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 thought, I thought you were making a weird apricot pun. So, well, I'm actually confusing with something else, but I, I think this place definitely has its own like bioluminescent signaling kind of language. But on top of that, it's also kind of surrounded by this big like um, kind of like balloon like shell. Like it's not it's not a rigid shell, um, but it's it's not just like super fragile either. Um, but I think it maybe helps kind of keep a little bit of the Kresser in at bay when like things start getting really busy around this bit, maybe when like quakes start happening and kind of um, spit things up. That's not the word I'm looking for. You know what I mean? I think we do. Um, but yeah, I like that written yeah. down. Who is next? I like the ideas that it has with the canal, like a bunch of water mills or like water wheels and things like that. Just like, I don't know. I just imagine like Amsterdam for some reason, not Amsterdam, or the Netherlands. Yes, as a whole, just the entire nation. Like a wild sea Amsterdam. Gotcha. Um, I think that they have the most marvelous light shows in the world because they've got this, you know, kind of protective flexible covering and they've got their own dialect of signaling that is primarily light based. They've got these canals, which are great for being able to move in fluid ways that otherwise, you know, you might not be able to in, in the middle of the air. I, I, I think that uh, and they've, they've got all these fantastic windmills that they can use to angle lights to have certain repetitive things. On. Like, I, I think they have the most fantastic and amazing light shows uh, that the Wild Sea offers. I like it. I have the added benefit of getting to bring everybody in. It's good. Yeah. In that case, um, you have just described the port of Ostraco, which is not where you're heading, but it's probably where you should head at some point, seeing as the ship that you were on and lost all of the crew of uh, did originate from there. Uh, currently, I believe, if you are following um, Agdis's once, which I think you said you were, but I don't want to push you into it, um, you are heading to Slim Pickings. Okay. okay. Then I will ask the question which will be often asked throughout this um, campaign. Who is at the helm and who is on watch? And given playtest D is now what we're running off of, is anyone on any other places? Because the ship does have more. You can watch the weather. Watching the weather works for me. I feel yeah. like I'm, I'm kind of like, hmm, what's this tree like? Darkness? Is it going to die in the light? Is it won't rain? Oh no, what's the weather doing? Okay, so you're watching the weather. Who's at the helm? I think uh, Obida wants to get his hands on some controls. He's got some like latent instincts that he likes to drive things. Obviously, the Shrike is his thing, but he, he's like, I just want to get my mitts on some controls. So I'll take that. that. Okay, um, who is on watch? Basil, Basil, Basil will be on watch because Basil did not see the kites and now he sees the kites and he thinks oh, shit, we have kites he's going to stay up top and check that out, check what's going on That is fair and that leaves uh, Hasalkin, what are you doing? I think I'm having a chat with Agdis because if we're going to go to Slim Pickings, I've got this great whisper that might come in use to him Distant Greetings uh, and so maybe he wants to say hello to someone at home. Uh, maybe it gives him a chance to send a message on ahead on the wind, but we can come to that sometime. But I think that's what he's doing is he wants to talk to Agnes. 
Yeah, that works for me. In that case, uh, let me write a short journey track out for you and let's get going. Um, journey to slim pickings. Okay, just so you know, uh, it's a completely open track. It's a three track. This is uh, not far away at all. Uh, let's hit these in sequence, starting with Asilian, I believe. How are you going? Um, I think first, I mean, Obida is overwhelmed by this helm. Um, we described it last time, right? We have like controls to the long jaw. Um, I like to imagine probably like the back part of the long jaw is detached and has the, the like rudder equivalent. So that kind of gives us the ability to tilt and stuff. Yeah. Um, but then we talk, there's also probably like a crank or something, some sort of levers and whatnot to start messing with the underscales. And then I imagine that kind of gives us like a tempo or like, you know, like a, a frequency, it's a th the throttle essentially for the underscales, but then probably something that allows you to angle the underscale. So I'm imagining maybe like a, some sort of joystick or something, it's just something that allows you to give some sort of tilt, just too many things. So yeah. um, I think first Obite is just kind of terrified, but um also remember the ship the ship is 70 years old so the controls were probably not as streamlined as ships that get made now <laughs> yeah there's you got to flip covers and there's things you got to press to let other things be able to move and like it takes them a while to figure out all of this and i imagine probably has to ask agnes a thing or two um in terms of like what do yeah that's entirely um, yeah so we're definitely not going to forge it well nope that's even funnier we are going to forge ahead but it's not on purpose <laughs> that's not right yeah i think so, i think obida wants to get a decent clip but he ends up just jamming everything forward and just full speed i, I, I but, like i like the idea yeah. you, you end up getting the long jaw in in hand eventually but it's the under scales that are just still going because you've you've got you've got good control of one of the controls but just yeah. you forgot that there's the other one going through <laughs> if you're cool with that perfect yeah, in, in fits and starts, occasionally grinding branches into splinters, even when you don't really have to, uh, sometimes cutting straight through a swell of waves rather than going up and across it, uh, you do indeed head forward at something approaching full speed, even if that wasn't quite what you were going for. Um, so I am marking off uh, two marks on the day track for that. And... I will remember that for when we wrote our encounter, which we should do um, probably last, I think, the encounter. So let's do weather first. I muted. I, I, yep, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> I rolled a six, actually. Fun. Clear skies. Uh, whatever the weather was doing before, it clears. The next part of your journey, uh, you might have a series of options. And I think we will go with a period of comfortable sunshine. Uh, it brings easy to hunt creatures to the surface, just so you know. And yeah, the, the overcast day kind of clears. Um, the, the clouds, they don't disappear entirely, but they, they break enough that the sun can shine through. And the ship, uh, you feel like a, a sudden liveliness, just, just like Paran was talking about to the wood. This is wood, uh, the, the kind of wood that makes up your ship that has been absent or light has been absent from this wood for so long, for 40 years. And you can see the wood of the ship while dead, being a ship rather than part of a tree anymore, there's still something to it. And a few of those like scars and scratches on this old ship start to heal themselves slowly. Um, have, we, have we explicitly mentioned outside of the character, I mean, the ship creation episode that this is like ghost oak, that it has like a, like, right, like the ghostly, deep, pale wood uh, look to it? Uh, we may not have mentioned that, but I'm glad we have now. Yeah, I, I imagine seeing this, Kips is just like, the tree, the ship, the ship, the tree, the tree ship, the tree ship, the, it likes the sun. It's, 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 look at it. It's, look at it. It does indeed. And uh, before we get onto the encounter role, uh, Rick, you did say Hasalkin was going to have a quick chat with um, Agnes, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, um, 
is there anyone that you'd like to try to say hello to at home? I think that I have, I, 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 I have away from my family that is used to say hello to family that is far away. And th this, if ever feels like the time to say hello for a reunion, uh, would you like that? Can Agnes, Agnes is standing by the rail looking over the waves. He doesn't seem in as good, and this is not a pun, in as good spirits as he did yesterday. Um, ah, I know. Uh, and he says, you know, if, you, if you'd asked me that 12 hours ago, I'd, I'd have said yes. And I don't want to stifle your enthusiasm, but I've had some news about slim pickings and I, I might still have family there, which is good, you know? Um, but they, uh, there's no way they'd have known that I survived if any kind of looks down at himself. And again, you see that instead of a full shadow, just that dappling, that mottling of light on the wood below him, survived, if you can call it that. Um, uh, I've got a husband. I had a husband, um, long lived. Uh, but maybe he's, you know, it's been a long time, is what I'm saying. And he taps some of that acid kind of burning pipe out and you see um, just that little, little sparking liquid come out of the end over the waves. He starts refilling it from a pouch on his belt. Well, if you'd like to try to say hello, uh, it's entirely possible to reach... I know, and I do appreciate it, believe me, and he kind of puts his hand on your shoulder. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be welcome. I'd rather, if it's not, I'd rather know right away if you get me. Yeah. Sorry, I just... No, no, I, you, you are already waiting. Why wait twice? That's, thank you. And I am going to start a track, in fact. And Hasalkan, you have just filled the first box on that track. May not be exactly what you were going for, um, but you have earning Agnes's trust. It is a hidden track, so you don't know exactly how many boxes are on it, but there will be a reward if you manage to fill it completely, as there often is. Um, and as, in fact, you travel and have this conversation with Agnes, like I said, it doesn't go quite the way you wanted it to, but it gives you something. Uh, something else most definitely happens, even if that's something else, it's just something nice. So let's finish with our encounter roll for this part of the journey. I rolled a four. You rolled a four, which means, uh, I believe that's a result of order. It is indeed. So, um, your roll of four gives you something which I should also roll my 1d6 for because I need to determine the threat of what you found. And I have. Wonderful. So um, you, on your way uh, to this port, Slim Pickings, you see a few other ships, um, more than you'd expect for this kind of area of the Wild Sea. And you realize... Um, Basil, as you're watching, that a lot of these ships seem to be kind of cutting through pre-made channels. Uh, you don't know what port they're going to or leaving from. It's not one of the ones that you know, although you are, I guess you are reasonably new to this particular area of the waves. Um, so, but yeah, there, there, there seems to be a lot of merchant activity around. And a few of the ships give you greetings as you go by. Uh, one of them in particular sends off a series of signals. Uh, they are lost slightly in the blaze of the sun, uh, these, these kind of color bursting messages. But if you are quick enough and lucky enough, you might be able to read them before they fade. Uh, if you don't speak signaling, of course, you can grab Hasalkin to help you out. I will. 
Yes. I do not speak that. Yes, that is fair. Um, however, I will impose a cut of one because you are moving in a decent clip, thanks to Obida uh, fiddling with as many controls as possible at once. <laughs> on purpose. Okay. I did it on purpose. It's all good. <laughs> I would have done the same. Sounds about right. That's fair. Uh, I think I'll use tides and then study. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, tides and study, and then Halsalkin's assistance. Yeah, so Halsalkin, if if you're happy, uh, you will be kind of called up, I guess, to the um the watch post. Yeah, for sure. Everyone needs to start learning a little bit of signaling, and so that's what. So how he's treating this time? It's, you know, if you're going to ask me for help, we're gonna we're gonna work together. Oh, lesson time. It is lesson time. Uh, in that case, yeah, roll it with uh, one d six advantage from Halsalkin helping you. I got six. Uh, don't forget to cut one. Yeah, so I get two threes instead. Oh, okay. Well, that's a disaster with a twist. Um, <laughs> so something. Uh, I'm going to give you um, the option to determine the twist in a second. The disaster is that you only get one clear word. It's not <laughs> Falcon's fault. It's not even really your fault, and it's not Abida's fault. Uh, it's it's the combination of the color, the day, the speed, everything just kind of going together to make that this message, which was fired off for your benefit, just miss you. But you managed to get the word festival. Falcon, oh, oh. Falcon, a festival, a festival, a festival, a festival. Something, something, something. Festival, something, something, something. Oh, I have an idea for the twist. Yes. Um, you have little buddies that are made of light, right? These are bursts of light. Maybe those That's little tricky. buddies understood more about the, the signals than, than we did because they are light. They understand light better. Your Georgies are doing some sort of imitation of whatever might be at that. Fe- they're doing just some sort of like small light Miniature. thing. Yeah, because they, they understand a little bit better than either of us do. They're like, well, you're you're missing these bits. Come on. Yeah. So they're, they're, we, we don't have a clear idea, but we can have some idea. I, that's actually a really cool idea. I will give you uh, two more words of that sentence. Seven word sentence. Uh, you know word four. Which other two words do you want? I'm literally three. holding things up. Which, yeah. which, are, which are the ones George three. is most excited three. about? Three. Oh, three is a good one. And then six. That's what I was thinking too. I am glad we are on the same page, Kay. Okay. Didn't have In to. In case. Uh, your interpretation of this message, helped by your George's repeating the flash as, as best they can, not perfect, but decent, uh, is the message is something, something, pickings, festival, something, ruined, something. Oh no. Oh, are all the ships heading in the same direction? No, some are going towards and some are going away. Which which one which direction was the one that messaged us? And one going away. Are we heading towards or away? You are heading towards. Well, we're heading real fast. You are indeed. And in fact, uh, it is time for Cillian, if you're still at the helm as a bider, uh, to choose. You've only got one <laughs> um, box left on this journey track, seeing as it is only a little way to the north. Do I choose chaos? Um, that's that's. I think it's much funnier to arrive with um, cut a path. Still, like you still can't quite figure out the controls. I'm almost there, but just not quite there. Yep, that makes sense. Forging on through. Okay, so, you continue or for or forge ahead. Forge ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, you continue yeah. forging ahead. Um. You have maxed out the going to Slim Pickings track, uh, and I know exactly what that's going to mean for you. But there is still a potential encounter, and some weather, and uh, whatever Salcom wants to do at this moment. So let's get the weather first. Okay, uh, 
Unless someone else wants to roll it, I just assumed I was doing it again. Uh, it's up to you. I do kind of think Kip wants to talk to um, Agnes as well. I, I think, personally, I think that we can not roll weather. We have a comfortable sun overhead, right? That's we don't true. need to change anything. I am I am happy leaving <laughs> the comfortable sun with overhead until yeah. we get to uh, slim pickings. Well, so. is that is that how it works mechanically, or are, would I we be rolling uh, it? Anyway? Seeing as we are still testing out the rules of play this, yeah. apparently that is how it works. Oh, all right, then we'll just keep that. <laughs> yeah. Happy ship, happy crew. Maybe some minor balance tricks or something. Happy ship, happy crew. Yeah. <laughs> The adventure okay. Um, so you ah, you wanted to talk to Agnes quickly. Yeah, I think I think with where where on the ship is that tree? By the way, I think it was like slightly forward of center, maybe. Oh, um, behind, I think it was behind the bridge. Yeah, the back. Yeah, What's the back? The yeah, behind yeah. The bridge okay. Bridge. Um, actually, that makes sense though, because then it would be high, and that's a good place to watch weather from. Yep. Um. And where is, where is Agnes? If you want, he can be right by you. Uh, after his conversation with his Halcon, he probably roved around the ship in a slightly sure. sour mood for a while. Yeah. Occasionally um, kind of catching his, his balance as it, it chewed through a particularly dense branch <laughs> under Abida's amazing steersmanship. <laughs> Thing is, you are steering well. You're just fast. <laughs> <laughs> Need for speed. Steering isn't the problem. I, I think... Um, Kip sees, you know, the the kind of uh, grabbing for balance, and it's like, "Hey, I, I'm um, uh, I don't know if it's as helpful for for um, somewhat ghostly people, but uh, the tree's actually a very nice handhold if if you want to just, you know, you just lean against it, and you just, you don't have to really think about what you're doing. You can just kind of watch." Well, I mean, it's hard not to think at the moment but you know there are worse things to do than relax under a tree he doesn't lean up against it with his hand he literally just kind of sits cross-legged and puts his whole back against it leans back and then says this was a this was a good choice thank you i have them sometimes i may even make good choices sometimes sometimes i don't sometimes some of me does and then some of me doesn't and and then some of me sometimes just doesn't make a choice and then it's kind of like last night where like I start going in different directions and um, that gets complicated. But um... I know the feeling actually. I, you're made of spiders. I hope that's not crash to say you're a you're a cello cray. But do you often do you sometimes feel like you're losing bits of yourself? Oh yeah. Um. So so I actually um I don't remember what the names were, but I, I Kip, right? Um, I was made by um, at least two Chelicrae or former Chelicrae, right? That like they used to be a Chelicrae like me. They used to be a, 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 an ourself. And I, I don't remember what their names were or we don't remember what their names were. They don't remember what their names were, but, but, but we know we had a name. We had, we had different names, and we don't know where we came from, but we know we we were we, a, but different a different we than we are now. And I, I'm sorry, I'm not very good with the language, with the 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 not the not hive um, anatomy. But um, do do you see what I'm saying? The thing is, I I think I do, because I don't feel like I'm the same me I was. I've been, I was down there for a long time. You know, 40 years is it, it's, even when you're dead, it's a long time. And I've spent so much time thinking about what I'd left behind and what I used to do. I don't know how much of that's just a story anymore. It's just kind of, I just want to be home, you know? Well, I, I, if it makes any difference, uh, I think it's a little bit to you how much is a story and how much isn't. I mean, I, I, uh, like I said, I, I don't remember, we don't remember the names, right? But um, we remember our name, right? We're, we're Kiptexia. And and we remember that once parts of us were Kiptexia. And um, every now and then, we, we, we do remember stuff about maybe where we came from. And, you know, it, it's, up, it's up to us if, if we want to go, go, go try to follow that or if we want to just kind of sit with it and, and go, wow, 
that's a cool thing. That's not me anymore, but that's good to know. You know? I think I do. Thanks. <laughs> and he kind of leans back against the tree and takes another puff of his pipe, runs his fingers through his beard and closes his eyes, whether he's really asleep or just feigning to get out of the ex- extremely strange last bit of that conversation as far as this poor, long dead ardent is concerned as he went into the, the mental state and, and uh, kind of the way a cello gray is constructed in terms of mind. <laughs> um, but you know he did actually genuinely appreciate it. So. Yeah. Uh, and I will, in fact, add another box. I'll mark the box off Agnes's trust. Um, and yeah, with that, uh, Basil, let's go to you. You are rolling for an encounter, I believe. You're muted. <laughs> so we just had a great dose of arachno non dualism, and that's just great. Yeah. I rolled a two. You rolled a two. That is nature. But before I do that, uh, Hasalkin, what are you doing? Oh, I think he finally discovered that uh, that kite, the sailing kite. I think he finally found that, and it's like, well, it is it is time to take now. To, the, the The ship is running itself; everything's going good. I I don't have it. I can. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go. And he he like like runs and like the ship's already going fast enough but he summons up a nice gust of wind so he like foom, just like zooms up and off he's like i'm gonna go play i, I got Bida. my work done <laughs> poor Bida's just trying to control the ship and it's like as a burst of speed no, no yeah. he's jumping off to go in the kite sail this is just the one like, like our <laughs> scouting sail yeah, yeah he's, he's, like he's flying remember disappear into the wind like what the fuck wait yeah so actually <laughs> there's actually, a tether on the sail well while, while we're here what does it look like because oh. i know in the past some of them have been like leaves and i know we've got the the tree in the back i don't know if it's connected to that or if it's like more forward but uh yeah what's this baby look like 100 percent. i think it is a tr- it is a leaf from this tree that has taken on pattern that has taken on um I don't know if it was uh, marked up and, you know, stitched in by the people who came before or if it is what the leaf has come to take as marking now. I think there's a little bit of combination of both. There's the way that the the leaf has reclaimed the markings that have been put into it, like especially when someone carved in. Like it is an odd thing seeing that this dead leaf has regrown these bits that were harmed on it. But this dead leaf here attached by tether to still was... uh, so I think I think it's it's some some markings, some stitchings. The the ones that it liked, the ones that it felt honored by, you know, it kept. I think, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's a bevy of markings. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I, I love the image that it's it's like a like a fall leaf and like got an orange reddishness to it, um, and then whatever color these sort of rejected markings have been, and it sits on like the top of the tree, almost like the top of a Christmas tree. Sort of, it's like a topper. That's where it's more. You kind of have to scramble up a side of the tree that's been mounted with like a you know ladder, like like you do to climb up the side of a tree house. Um, oh yeah, and, and you just unhook it, this like bobble, and then it bursts open and it takes the wind. I really like that. Oh, and yeah, in that case, then the 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 the, the burst the little bit, bit of wind that Hasalkin has is like in in as he's climbing up, he's like throwing himself because the wind is like catching on the patterned sash that he has, to just like throw him up with every every handhold to just get up there fast and he kicks off in the burst and he's he's gone he's in the the air flying above as this happens well uh i am connecting uh basil's watch roll with hasalkin's air exploration there because basil saw something natural and that natural you're also muted unmuted Okay. And, um, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah. It's fine. This is normal. Um, as as the, the ship um, at its extreme speed um, goes over one of these kind of wave crests, um, it chews massively through a branch. Like there are splinters and wood pulp everywhere. The long jaw that, that runs this thing like catches the two bits of the long jaw. They catch on the top and bottom of this branch and just tear it to pieces. So on deck, all you can see is this sudden mist of, of splinters. Um, but Basil, in your position up the tree to watch, and Hasalkin on the glider, you are suddenly given a little bit more height than everyone else, and you both see something different. Um, 
Hasselk and you see something far away, and Basil, you see something close. One of which is good, maybe, and one of which is bad, probably. Hasselkin, you see what looks to be some kind of balloon, uh, large, very large in the distance. Um, and it looks to be in the direction of the port you were heading to. But when Agdis described slim pickings, there was no balloon there. Um, and this is like, it's, it's a big thing. Like this is obviously designed to stay in the air for a long time. Um, but then you are down and you're kind of pulled back down and, and you lose that bit of aerial sight. Uh, but you know you're heading towards something which, yeah, definitely not exactly how Agdis described it. Um, and Basil, you are more concerned with what is closer. Uh, and what is closer is a writhing iridescent stream of insects directly in your path. Bugs. Yeah, um, big bugs. And in fact, it bugs um, wait, how big are bugs? These, like, these, each one of these is probably like dog sized. Fuck. Oh my uh, God. And you, having been out on the wild sea not a huge amount of time before, but like time enough, you would have heard tales of this. And you know that you are about to not just kind of come across, but plunge straight into, thanks to forging ahead, um, a roach river. Uh, a roach river oh, is essentially a, a death march of roaches, giant roaches. They move in, normally, like this, this river seems to be um, a good kind of, what, 100 foot wide um, and probably <laughs> extends several miles. This giant circle of roaches just following each other for why? Uh, until, they, until they drop, really. Why? Um, why? That's how cruel nature is. No, that's how cruel you are. <laughs> yeah, that's also how cruel I am. Um, but yeah, so the, these roaches, um, they are not a threat to you in terms of what they are doing, uh, but they will be a threat to your ship in terms of hitting them at speed. Also, Hassan's just flying. Yeah. I, I scream, big bugs. <laughs> really big bugs at Obadiah, not that he can do anything. Um, Wait, no, no, Obadiah no. or Obida? Fuck. <laughs> it's a stressful moment. Basil's going to slip. <laughs> kind of syllable out. <laughs> Big bugs. Obadiah. Damn, Obida. <laughs> Obida. Sorry. No apologies. But also, sorry. Um, and then he immediately sprints to the kite, yells, Big bugs. At Halsalkin and just starts tugging on the tether really hard. Like, come on down. No, no, I'm gonna stay up. I, uh, maybe I can act. Oh, he lets it go. He's just like, all right, that's that's that. Uh, we we He's... may be able to forge some insects. Yeah, with the um, with the the shout of big bugs, uh, your <laughs> eyes are kind of torn off the. Well, I just don't have eyes. Blooms are torn off the bloom in the distance, and you do see this roach river. Um, it, it is massive like this is 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 a serious thing um it probably extends a good 20 or 30 foot down into the tangle as well just bodies oh, yeah. on bodies on bodies crawling over each other um and obida uh for now we're going to go straight to you because you have to react to this in some way even if it is just to plunge through so yeah yeah i think at first um obida has some like existential terror of like Big bugs. I'm a big bug. <laughs> what does he mean by big bugs? Big bugs. Was that an, that's rude. <laughs> like, was that an insult? Why are we talking he's about? He's small. He's a small uh, mother, isn't he? He's a the other one's guy. a bunch of spiders. That one could also be big bugs. Yeah, I like... was gonna say. It's also like, wait, is this is is this me? I'm not bugs. I'm arachnids. It's different. Also, it's... <laughs> It's different. Yeah, I have a little guy that nobody's met yet hiding in my clothes. That's also a big bug. Uh, <laughs> and so I, much, do they know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, do they know there's more than one of us? Like, well, and then I think we probably, I probably see the dog sized cockroaches in the distance and kind of snap out of the insult of it all. Um, 
Yeah, uh, distance is a very <laughs> generous word right now because, like I said, you're moving at speed. Uh, so yeah. you you go over like the next swell, and as you're coming down to the next trough, you see that that trough is entirely full of these cockroaches. You have literally seconds until you hit them. I mean, I guess two thoughts to run through his head. Either he could try to cut underneath, but he has no idea how deep this river would go, and then we'd just be completely submerged in cockroaches. Or we go faster and just try to completely <laughs> skim as fast as possible over this river of cockroaches. So, um, yeah, I think I think he, he just screams out, drop the sails! And then anything that he hasn't cranked to the maximum, because I think he's getting addicted to the power of the speed, um, <laughs> he, he's, yeah, he pushes it to the, to the, to the maximum and tries to Pull the, I mean, like when you're boating, you can kind of pop off waves and stuff. So he's going to try to hit the way and try to get as over the, the river of cockroaches as he can. Yeah, also, a little, a little bit more existential dread of like, I'm about to murder like hundreds of bugs. And how far separated is my sapience from these cockroaches? All right. Not, and then just drives into them by then. <laughs> I was going to say, if you, if you keep it another road, I'll definitely give you a point of Maya, because that sounds like it might actually get to you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll get there if it comes to it. Um, Rick, I saw a hand go up there. I don't know if you were going for attention. Mm, oh, no, 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 no. Or just uh, stretching. I, I have no I idea. I was just stretching. But thank okay. you. I appreciate that attentiveness. I mean, I, I, there's something I guess I could do, which might be helpful if you're going to crash into stuff. But we can. you're going to do that rule first, because... I've got a sash that makes animals pay attention to me really good. So, but do that a lot first. Of animals. Um, so is this going to be a ratings roll? Yeah, I mean, I mean, speed. I guess. Uh, yeah, you can, go, you can drive for speed. You can drive for swords. You can drive for tilt. You said you weren't going under them, so tilt doesn't really apply. But speed or swords, either would be good. So I'll go for speed. Do I do I roll one dice plus the rating, or is it just the rating? Just the rating. We got three d six, so that's that's a six. That's a triumph. There we go. A triumph. You are going to skim over the top of this river. It is still going to hurt your ship because you're still hitting it at speed, but it's not going to impede you. It's not going to slow you down. It's not going to stop you. So. Yeah. Uh, which rating would you like to take a point of damage to? I would recommend armor or seals. So like it armor. really is a few armor. Is fair. Armor or seal, yeah. Yeah. Just some of your exterior hull is going to scrape up against the chitin of these cockroaches as you move. Um, and everyone else on deck, uh, I would like you to take a point of damage. Because the... Uh, oh, actually, yes, no. Yeah, everyone else on deck, not you, Haselkin, you are safe for now, uh, because you're not on deck. Uh, yeah, let's you take a point of damage, uh, a mark of just blunt damage. Um, is the ship just kind of slewing to the side uh, as, you, as you essentially slide over this hundred foot of cockroach is a, a, a very impressive speed. We've, we've described the bridge as closed before, I think that was. I think the, when the yeah. when the sails were down, the bridge is closed over, and we we yeah. probably put the sails down once we got out to sea because we didn't need them. So the bridge yeah, can yeah. be closed over if you'd like. I'll take it. Just presume nobody threw up the sails because we were going. I was like, oh, by the you did you did. I might have didn't say actually, to, yeah. but I, I don't know if we had the time. Yeah, yeah we had like well, two uh, seconds. The only person that threw was, uh, okay. was you, in fact. Obadiah. What? What? <laughs> The only person that could have done the sales, actually, as, Ob as Obida shouted out, uh, was you, Kit. So did you do that? Um, I, I, I think I'd leave it to you, Felix. If, if I had time, I would have. Um, you, you, you had the, the few precious seconds to, like, grab the ropes and just yank as hard as possible. Spider chain. <laughs> So yeah, you are you are definitely protected from flying chitinous bits and cockroach wings and horrible stuff. Um, but yeah, that that mark of blood damage just from the deck like slewing out and then slamming into you uh, as the the ship's orientation just slightly changes. Uh, for you, Hasalkan, that's just a yank on the the kind of tether of this um, leaf glider that you have, the kite sail. Um, but yeah, you uh, you do make it over the Roach River with minor injuries, which. 
given that I rolled a one for my hazard uh, roll for it, meaning it was the most dangerous possible thing at this moment, that's pretty good. Feeling pretty bad, just yeah. just for just, just for a little those um, controls. Yeah, just for a little out of game noise. Roach rivers. Normally, you plunge into them and then get completely overrun by cockroaches and buried in them, which is uh, you know. So even though your ship took a bit of damage and you took a little bit of damage, that was definitely a triumph in terms of actually you know. We, we turned I, our anchor into a skipping stone. I also feel like Obida just like. Obviously, that was awful and existential dread and stuff. But now that he pulled it off, I feel like Obida is probably like, shit, that was cool. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for guys... Not to put words in your mouth, but like, I asked, like, you, we are sailing across yeah. a trough in the wild waves. And it's like, for someone that practiced jumping on his shrike, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. He's riding that high. <laughs> Um, and in fact, as you, uh, I don't know riding high, as you go across the, the next kind of swell of the waves, of the wave tops, um, you are all now high enough that you can see that balloon that Hasalkin saw. Um, and also Hasalkin, as you are high than everyone else. Uh, and probably Basil, actually, you do this as well, seeing as you're still in the tree. Um, you can see you are not the only ship to have crossed this Roach River, and you can probably make sense, the two of you, of that message now. Uh, the Pickings Festival probably was ruined uh, by the fact that most of the ships heading towards it turned back because that Roach River is not fun to cross. So a lot of ships carrying supplies to this notional festival just would not have made it. How long do Roach Rivers last? Uh, it depends. Some of them are eternal. Can I try and redirect this Roach River? You could give it a go. Yeah. I would like to in this moment, I've, I've got, I, I can dance and control the wind and I've got a pattern sash. So I, I think I might in this moment, uh, un, un like strap the, the, um, <clears throat> the, the line kind of swing on down. You got this pattern sash to try and distract these roaches, pull them on off and away from that spot. Uh, and then, you know, you're, stuff you're the scarf also, away to hide it. You're also on a glider right now. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm, uh, yeah. I'm gonna give you a cut for that, just so you know. Perfect, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand you're, entirely. You're trying to dance, direct, glide yeah, yeah. On, for the first time as well. And, yeah, yeah. It's, this it's is something he has dreamed of doing for a very, very long time. But uh, not specifically a Roach River. He didn't imagine it that would be his first thing. But uh, but I figure if we can redirect some of this, maybe some more traffic will be able to come through, and then yeah. this will be a better opportunity. So. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, Edge of Grace. I've got um, my Flourish uh, Pattern Sash and all of the glider, but there's a cut of one as well. So I've got 4d6, uh, cut one. So that's fine. We remove the six and we are left with a four, three, three. Okay, a conflict with a twist. Yeah. Um, so the good part of this is that you do manage to redirect the Roach River. The bad part of this is that you redirect the Roach River maybe not in the way that you wanted to. It is now following your ship. So you break that circle because Roach Rivers are essentially massive circles. Um, so given a few hours, that Roach River will dissipate. You have essentially ended it but you haven't ended it by redirecting it somewhere else. You've ended it by making it follow you until they'll eventually lose interest. And, you know, um, problem is you are now really close to the port of slim pickings. Um, however, before we get there, there is a twist. I know what I want my twist to be if no one else has anything. Uh, I use my pattern sash partially also for signaling. I don't, I wasn't doing anything on purpose, but I think people noticed that, oh, someone's actively moving with this. Someone's mo making work on this. So I think, the people of Slim Picking is recognizing that this is happening are probably some of the ships that feel like they can help out, you know, disperse these because they or just hunt these roaches because they, you know, you don't want to deal with it beforehand. But if they're all going to be broken up and dispersed or you can find ways to scare them, blast them out, whatever it may be. So I think with that twist, uh, they've some of the ships out there will start heading out our way because they've just noticed some one was fucking stupid enough to do something. <laughs> that makes sense. And yeah, I'm entirely happy with that. Um, you will see, actually, as you come to full view of the Port of Slim Pickings, 
sort of, that several ships are now leaving port uh, based in time on the fact that they have seen you breaking up partially this road river that was keeping so many people from them. Um, however, Agdis is staring in shock at his home as you draw closer. Who is closest to him? I would keep. He'll say, I, I just he was hanging out the tree with me, so I think I am. We are. Basil's probably close enough to hear if you climb up the tree to do watch. That's true. Yeah, I'm just hanging out. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can all see this, but the few around Agdis get that little bit of extra info. Um, the Port of Slim Pickings, as Agdis described it, was a broken tall shank uh, with a, a big kind of sliver of stone or bone into it with some houses built on top of it and uh, some cows. Um, slim Pickings is not so slim anymore. It is, the, the tall shank is still there, this kind of broken tall shank, but there is a massive kind of spider web of gantries and balloons around it. Um, this place looks like a small city rather than just a tiny port of a few people. Uh, slim Pickings in the last 40 years has expanded massively. And that balloon that you saw uh, when you were up there has happened, um, that is attached to the end of this massive kind of spike of stone that stuck through the trunk of this um, tall shank. Uh, literally, you get to hold it up because of the weight of buildings. There are apartment blocks on there. Like, they, it is massively, massively crowded. Um, and yeah, Agdis, uh, for those of you close enough, Agdis is just almost literally slack-jawed. He's just like, that's, that's not... That's not home. <laughs> um, I think I think Kip would like stay silent for a minute and then just kind of and I I, I don't totally know what you're feeling since I, I, I don't remember where the other Wees were from, but um I just wanted to say um we you you were saying um you you can't remember how much of your past was story. And how much of it really happened? And, and you you were gone for forty years, and it, well, but Slim Pickings doesn't maybe remember either. It was it's been forty years, and um, it's um, it's may, maybe it's not exactly your home anymore. But it it was still used to be your home, and and it is up to you whether whether you want to go back and meet it for what it is now, or or you want to move on? That's, yeah, I suppose. He kind of wipes his brow, and you can see he is actually sweating a bit, if, in fact, Angered can sweat. Um, but, yeah, he's just like, yeah, I suppose it's, I shouldn't be. Obviously, things are going to have changed. I'm just, I didn't expect this much, you know, and I'll, I'll take it as it comes. I'll I'll be all right. Or I'm not. Here. Could just More take a nap. More for the family than the place. The so I'll be fine. There you go. It's um um you know you as much and as or as little uh, as you're up for you know. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. And with that, I believe our session is drawing to a close. A last action from everybody as you move towards the port of now. As you draw close, actually, before I say this. Um, Abida, are you slowing down? Oh, yeah. God. Oh, yeah. The moment we've cleared the river, he's doing the exact opposite of what he's doing. Okay. okay. However long. Just, just, just wanted to check that you weren't just going to plunge straight into the side of this port. Um, what, what does the moment of realization look like when you've, like, killed the long jaw controls, the ship's still going, and then you realize that the entire time the underscales have just been rolling full <laughs> throttle? What does that moment of realization look like, please? Um abject horror and then there's a slow turn to his shrike when he realizes that he could still bail if he can't <laughs> figure out how to stop it <laughs> and, and then a mad dash of desperation as he pulls every control in front of him to see if the scales will go in reverse or something and he yeah. drops the anchor too so that like just dragging behind like everything like trying to see if the sails can do something <laughs> I, I think we'd said um, that the, the scales were just like a lever, so thankfully, yeah. after a while. 
At least, at least one of those things you pull gives off a massive hiss of steam as the steam pipes eject almost everything, and the ship just kind of shudders and judders on the wave tops for a moment, but the engine kicks back in. Um, Basil, you feel that very violently up the tree as you're just shaken back and forth on this poor thing. Um, and uh, yeah, but you you do start to slow down to a more reasonable speed as you head towards this port. Um, and one of the first things you notice in terms of detail, and we won't go into too much detail at the end of this session, but one of the first things is it's not called Slim Pickings anymore. It is literally called Rich Pickings. Um, it is picked out. Uh, both in low sour and you guess in brass tongue on a massive sign over a very, very well developed port. And this port is full of merchant ships. Like there is, as you go towards it, uh, you can see all of the levels around this port uh, have been built into this, like partly into the tall shank trunk and partly into this big shard of stone attached to it. Um, it is just floor after floor after floor of bazaars and shops and, and taverns and it's just the, the whole thing is overrun with people. So yeah, last actions from everyone as you head towards rich pickings. Basil is super fucking interested in that balloon. Like if Hal Falcon was not on the kite, Basil who has never flown in his life would have been like, I'm gonna get on that kite and I'm gonna go to the balloon. But okay. as it is, he just kind of stands on the tree. And if we have any um, closeness to it. He is preparing to jump onto it. <laughs> okay. It's probably too high to jump onto, but... Or the rope, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Well, you could probably take the kite sail up and jump onto it from the kite sail, but there's a, yeah. Uh, yeah. Up is there. So uh, okay, so Basil, excited by a balloon. Um, Hasilkan. Uh, I think he is flying around because um, I, I think at, at this point now that he knows like where the ship is, he's like fully detached the tether from it as as best he can. Like uh, if and that's uh, extremely dangerous, but okay. <laughs> well, at, at this point, he's 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 got the wind that goes and works with him as he as he moves. It's fine. It's it's okay. Uh, and so I think he but he's like trying to help out these other ships that have come to sail out and disperse these rats more. And just also, you know, like showing off being the guy being seen as the person who did what he did it yeah. feels like a valuable thing for us coming into this place being seen by the citizens of rich Pickings. gotcha um kip uh, i think um for a moment looking up at at the the, the kite sail just like wait what no wait right that didn't work last time. I'm gonna. Is he's he's okay. It's, um, well, I mean, he's probably not okay, but he's. I can't. That's what he's doing, and he's gonna do it. And it. <clears throat> and then looks back at uh, Agnes and is like, "Oh, I mean, I mean, you haven't met. You haven't met it yet, but you, you. It, his name is Rich now. Yeah, it's um, it does look rich." And I'm going to actually, I'm going to mark another box on the Agnes's trust track. You have successfully handled this poor guy watching his past disintegrate around him. And uh, with that, Obida, close us out. I think successfully having stopped the ship um, and not crashed it into the side of a port, um, Obida's feeling pretty baller. And he uh, steps out and lets something out of his, uh, his kind of I described it right like the the kyo doka where those like chops like kimono that have like the shortened sleeve for, for pulling the bow um then he kind of shakes out the long sleeve and uh yeah a big old scorpion kind of tick 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 tickles out um on, onto his hand and he sees like a little smushed um just kind of got a little like a, a little battered hand and it clearly kind of took the brunt of that blow whenever the ship jostled so it kind of starts like fiddling with a leg trying to get it back into place and the scorpion uh, pulls up the tail and it's got this like bizarre menagerie of like tool ends that, that all kind of shift and refocus and twinge around each other uh, all looking like chunks of a key and uh you know, kind of gives him some pants and tries to fiddle with his legs a little bit get him back into place um, well paulino i guess this is next stop he looks out over rich pickings <laughs> 
Okay, then yeah, that is a perfect way to end our session. Oh, before we end recording completely, um, a little bit of bookkeeping. Milestones. Yeah. Multi-tool scorpion! Okay, I'm done. Multi-tool scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will give you all a minor milestone for having a successful night with the soil ship crew, seeing as I think that was pretty valuable for all of you in a way. Um, and it was your, your first actual kind of event as a crew uh, yourself. And did we get two minor milestones last session? Uh, yes. you did indeed. You got one in general and one specific for each of you that you can decide, and it's exactly the same this week. One in general for the Soil Ship crew, and then oh. whatever you think helped define something for you in this game, you get a minor milestone for that too. So you don't have to work out exactly what they are now, but just... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, in that case, I think we're done for the week. Thank you, everybody.